Hi, this is Johnny Hunkins of Popular Hot Running Magazine. And this pile of parts is a Heights IRS for a Mustang. And we're going to install it on this 1966 Mustang convertible. Before you can begin putting in your Heights IRS, you have to take off the old suspension. Uh, here's the old rear end and leaf springs and stuff. Now over here, you have to take off all these bump stops. You have to cut them off and grind them down so that you end up with just a bare frame rail here. And then eventually, this is going to go in right here. And you have to measure from the back of the frame specific amount. How much is that, Grant? 24 inches. 24 inches. Here. Then you got to drill some holes in the frame rail for that to just bolt right in. You want to grind these frame rails and get them all clean. Once you get the Heights frame rail saddles into the frames and get those holes drilled, then you're going to want to put these half inch bolts in there. Before you put the top cross member in, you're going to want to measure out and drill two three inch holes in the trunk area. Now before you put the top cross member into the car, you're going to have to bolt the center section to it first using these uh, half inch bolts that are supplied with the Heights kit. Your next move is to put in the axle seals and before you put them in you need to put a little bit of sealant on them and then they go right in the end of the rear end housing and you want to use a tool to kind of hammer it in and it'll actually bottom out on the shoulder that's inside the rear end housing. Okay, we've got to uh, put the studs in the rear end housing for the uh, axle shafts. So we have uh, we have to screw these in with a uh, thread locking compound, and then we have to also set the depth to uh, height specifies seven eighths of an inch. So we'll do that, and then we also have to put these studs in for the uh, for the third member itself into the front, which are the longer studs. Same thing, we have to screw these in and set them to an inch and an eighth, which is an inch and a quarter. There we go, an inch and an eighth. Next, we're going to take this four nine inch rear with a 325 gear ratio and we're going to put it inside our center section right there. So you're going to take a little bit of white grease, put it on the axle stubs, and just put it in the housing. These aluminum pieces are the caliper plate, which is also the bearing retainer, and they go on these studs right there on the center section. This is the pinion support plate, and you have to take the pinion bolts out and put the plate on the pinion and then put the bolts back on top of it. The pinion support cross member gets put right here on the pinion bracket and then also on the U-channels right here.
putting on these lower control arms is a little bit of a juggling act because you've got to put it between the two pinion plates and also you've got to put this tie bar on the end of the bushing and you have to do this for both sides Time to put the uprights on, which Grant's already done on the right side. This is connected to the lower control arm, and this end's going to go to the upper control arm, which we're going to put on later. The outer bearings go into the upright with three screws that come in from behind. You have to put those in and you got to do it on both sides as well. When you put the outer bearing on, you want to torque them to 65 foot-pounds. And over here, Grant's preparing the rotor with the rotor hub adapter, and those go screw together, and then they'll end up going up here onto the center section. Hundred and eighty inch pounds on this part here folks. Now we gotta take this axle shaft and put it into the bearing that's on the upright. Fits right into the splines. And then you have a big old nut on the other end, which needs to be torqued really high. We're going to do that later. Hole jack is a good thing to have when you have to raise this whole assembly up here. And you have to attach the axle to the stub axle. Do a Loctite on these bolts. When you bolt the half shaft onto the stub axles, it actually sandwiches the rotor and the rotor hub assembly using these long bolts that we just put the Loctite on. Starting to look like an IRS here. You want to torque these babies up to 57 foot-pounds. This is a Willwood Dynalite dual piston caliper and it's going to go just great on this ten and a half inch rotor and that's going to go right up here now there are some mounting tabs on the back of the rear end housing that it goes to on the plate that we put in there earlier right there Now it's time to put that upper link in and it just goes in with those half inch bolts that Heights provides. You notice that that kink right there, that's going to be pretty much located so that there's clearance there, travel clearance around that uh, part of the frame. The Heights IRS uses a coilover style shock and coilovers are very nice because they combine the coil spring with the shock absorber in one unit and they tend to be a lot more compact than a traditional suspension they're also a little bit lighter weight and this particular one has a single adjustable valving on it which will allow you to adjust the uh, dampening value for the rear end Now the Heights IRS kit comes with a set of subframe connectors and that's cool because on an old car like this there's lots of chassis twist. This car's got a pretty powerful engine and uh, this will definitely add some stability and reduce the cow shake on it. Um, one of the interesting things about these subframe connectors is that there is a tab for a suspension member that goes to the lower control arm and it attaches there and it gives an added degree of stability 
in the longitudinal axis, and it actually ties into the subframe connector right there, and you have one on each side. So you get that extra stability in the rear end, and you also get chassis stability with the subframe connector. Now, we actually ordered the wrong kit because we have a convertible which has this huge uh, brace in the way, but there is a separate part number for convertibles, and we're going to be adding that later, so we will have that proper part later on. There you have it, folks. Heights Pro-G IRS for 64 to 70 Mustang.